Jesus, all, all the evangelists, all the missionaries who are going to participate tonight. Lord, may your Holy Spirit minister to each and every one of us. We invite the Holy Spirit to receive your true revelation tonight from the message. Use a servant who is going to deliver your true gospel, Lord. It is by your word that we are waiting your revelation. We give you glory and honor, Lord. Thank you so much for the team of Korea tonight. Thank you so much for this platform to reach the gospel to every people and every look and corner around India and around Asia and all over the world. Lord, during the pandemic, during this in the midst of pandemic and in the midst of lockdown everywhere, every place, every country, Lord, by your word, we can understand that there is no lockdown for your word. There is no lockdown for the power of the Holy Spirit. Every place, every minute, every second, your Holy Spirit can minister to us. We give you glory and honor, Lord. With this prayer, we give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 So there are more people coming in, so let's wait for them. Welcome, Primavera.
Welcome, Pastor Tara. So welcome everyone. Soon we'll be starting the meeting in three minutes. We still have some people joining, trying to connect. So we started again to share 27 lectures. Today we are going to share um, lecture two. Pastor Thomas will share lecture two with us. Let's wait for two more minutes and we're going to start the meeting. So if you have your lecture book with you, that's great. If not, please prepare your Bible and a note to take. Welcome, Pastor. So Pastor Amrata Pradesh, um, if you can do serve opening prayer, that would be great. And Pastor Jivanson, um, if you can do the intercession prayer after the message, um, that would be great. Okay. Shall we pray? Sure. Our most gracious heavenly master, we thank you and praise you for this time of uh, uh, hearing your God's word, hearing your word, O Allah. Father, the time of worship and listening your word will be meaningful in our lives. It will bring transformation and it will prepare us to do your mission in a better way. Lord, this time we submit the preacher, one who is going to teach your word, O Allah, in connection to the discipleship. Lord, I pray that you anoint with your power and uh, Lord, you enable him to deliver your teaching effective way so that each and every participant will be benefited uh, for the glory of you alone, Lord. Jesus, this evening, we connect in online to listen from you, Lord, to get benefit from you, Lord. Father, it is not that a human face, human talent can bring transformation in our life but we trust you Allah and we submit ourselves in your mighty hand Allah the time of listening your word be a meaningful and uh, uh, bring effective result in our life that's what we expect this evening and we pray that <clears throat> everyone will be blessed Father, we commit the a preacher of this hour and all the participants once again in your mighty hand. Thank you for listening to us in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So once again, welcome everyone. It's my great um, pleasure um, and honor to worship our Lord with you. And today we're going to listen to Pastor Thomas' message. He's going to share lecture two. Um, he's going to share what is the gospel of the Bible from lecture 27. And um, last week, we were able to share um, what is the Bible and what is the characteristics of the Bible and what is the very purpose of the Bible. And from John 20, 31, we were able to see that with our own eyes that the Bible was written. It was given to us so that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And when we truly believe that way, God, the Bible will help us will guide us um, to really believe in him and to become a witness of the gospel. So um, without the further ado, I'd like to invite Pastor Thomas and he's going to share the message today. 
And oh, before that, please understand that I'm going to mute everyone um, so that um, no noise will interfere the message. And the one who will be speaking will turn on the speaker and they will be speaking. So I'm going to mute everyone. So please, Pastor Thomas, unmute your mic and start the message. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nina. And I want to thank every disciples today, Pastor Ravi and uh, all the India disciples. You are so precious to us. And uh, I'm so glad for the opportunity to be able to fellowship and to be able also to share the word of God together. And let us pray. Father, we want to thank you that you have given us this opportunity to be able to grow deeper together in you. We ask, O oh Lord, that you open our understanding to understand the scriptures. Open our eyes. Reveal yourself to us, O oh God. Grant us the revelations of yourself. Allow us to be grounded and be rooted in your love. And use our life, O oh God, as we continue to believe in this gospel for the word of realizations of India and Asia. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So last week, we'll be able to see, according to what the missionary Nina said, we look at the characteristics of the Bible as the foundation for the gospel so that we will not be deceived. And if you look at the book of Matthew, chapter 24, book of matthew chapter 24 verse 3 to 5 when the disciples were asking jesus about the sign of his second coming see and also the sign that to for them to know the when the old world will come to an end see so we could see that one of the profound signs that or indication that jesus gave to his disciple was the sign of deception see that they should not be deceived. He says, while Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciple came to him privately and said, tell us when these things take place and what will be the sign of your coming, that is your second coming and of the end of the age. Then verse, 20, uh, verse four of Matthew chapter 24, Jesus answered them, see to it that no one deceives you. See, so that's the false sign that we will not be deceived. And deceived about what? You see, we need to understand what, what kind of deception? Deceived about what? Is it about politics? Is it about finance? Is it about economic issues? Is it about the pestilence and disease? He said, no. It's just one thing that we must not be deceived about. In verse 5, he clarified that. He says, because many will come in my name and say, I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. Say, and they will deceive many people. So, so we can see the importance of understanding what the gospel of the Bible is. So it's so crucial that if we don't understand it from the beginning, our faith, we claim that we believe, but our faith will be faulty. See, Because many of us, our faith is resting upon the wisdom of men, which the Bible says no, our faith must not rest upon the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. So we can see the Messiah himself talking about that, that people will be deceived because there have been the plans of the devil in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. That is the plan of the devil, to blind our mind. It does, it's not only unbeliever. You see, even in, even in the theological school, in the Bible college, we can see many professors that they are teaching theology, but they have blindness of mind to what the gospel is. So, so it's very important that we must not be deceived. See? And if we listen to many messages on our radios, on our televisions, on social media, we can see many deceptions that are already taking place. See? See? So we must not be deceived. That was the first thing. And uh, we could see that the Galatian church and also the Corinthian church, they had the problem after Paul has been able, through the help of the Holy Spirit, to establish the church in Galatia and in Corinth. We could see that they, after six to eight years of establishing of the church, we could see that when he go back, he begin to listen to their messages, the evangelism, what the content of their message. So Paul was able to discern by the Holy Spirit because he understood what the gospel of the Bible is to be able to discern that, no, what they were preaching was totally different from what he preached to them that they believed at the initial stage. So he was able to rebook the Galatian church and the Corinthian church that they've been deceived, just like said snake deceived Eve in the beginning. 
that we also be deceived by corrupting our mind away from Christ. See, so, and that is what's so important. If you don't understand what the gospel of the Bible is, anybody that come and tell you anything from the Bible, you just believe it because you can't really discern what is the gospel and what is another gospel. So, so clearly through the Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 to 9 and 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 to 3, we'll be able to see what is called another gospel, which Paul said is not even another. And classically, we're able to see throughout the life of Paul, who Paul was, that he was a formal persecutor of the church, of the disciple of Christ. And we could see that in Acts chapter 9, on the way to Damascus, we see how he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus himself. And we could see that immediately after his conversion, after three days of fasting and prayer that he was receiving the Holy Spirit, the messages he began to preach. So we could understood the message he preached to start the church in Galatia and Corinth was Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, in Acts chapter 2, I mean Acts chapter 9, verse 22. We'll be able to see that one clearly. And we'll be able to see through how the Bible, that it's not only Paul that preached that, made that gospel. It wasn't Paul's style. It wasn't Paul's theology. It wasn't Paul's idea. It was the message, the content of the message of the old Bible in John chapter 20, verse 31 talks about that, that the purpose why God gave us the old Bible is that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And by believing in him, we have eternal life. Now, the issue is, why this gospel is so important? Why is it that gospel is Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Many people might think it's just a... A, a, a slogan. People might even think, oh, these are just a jail suite, another jail suite generation that are coming up because they talk about Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is Christ. No. The faith of believing in Jesus as the Christ is the same faith that believe in God the Father and the Holy Spirit. If you believe in Jesus as the Messiah and you deny the Father and you do not believe in the Holy Spirit, then your faith is not, is not accurate. It's not the right faith. See, the right faith is that we must believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and also believe in God the Father, and also believe in God is the Holy Spirit. See? And that is why it's so important. But we shall look at it. Why is it that Christ is the center of everything? See? Now, let's look at it in Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. We remember when John the Baptist came and began to preach and baptize people at the River Jordan that Jesus himself went to fulfill all righteousness, right? To be baptized by John. And John says, no, he's not the one who's supposed to baptize him. He is the one who is supposed to baptize him. But Paul, Paul, God sent John the Baptist to be able to reveal to the old Israel that the Messiah that they'll be waiting for has come. See, that was the purpose of, the, of John's water baptism. See? So when he was being baptized in Luke chapter 3, verse 21, we could see an expression of God the Father, God the, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit here. So it, verse 21 says, when all the people were baptized, Jesus too was baptized. While he was praying, heaven opened. Look, uh, verse 22, and the Holy Spirit came down to him in the form of a dove. A voice from heaven said, you are my son, whom I love. I am pleased with you. So we can see here three personality, see? Three personality. The son was being baptized. The Holy Spirit came upon him in form of a dove. Now, it's not a dove. It was using the characteristics of dove. Why? Because dove is gentle. See, it's a gentle bird. It's using the gentility of the dove to characterize the Holy Spirit. That it came gently upon him. Then the father began to speak that this is my son in whom I love, in whom I am well pleased. See, so we can see son uh, Holy Spirit and also the Father manifesting here, even though it's in three in one, which goes beyond the human's imagination. See, we can only believe what is written in the Bible concerning the concept of Trinity, but there's no way human being can fathom the depth of understanding of Trinity until we enter into glory. Then we shall see clearly. But following what the Bible says, well, you can see that Holy Spirit is not the same as Jesus. Holy Spirit is not the same as the Father. So we can see these three personalities, but they are all in one. They work together in unity. See? So now, also in Matthew chapter 28, 
after the resurrection of, of Jesus, we can see Jesus also talking about that in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Okay? So he says, so wherever you go, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to do everything I've commanded you. And remember that I am always with you until the end of time. Because, you know, whenever we travel to different countries of the world for World of Generalizations meetings or conferences, some people do ask questions that, do you guys really believe in Trinity? Then do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit? Because every time he only talks about Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is the Christ. Now, because if you don't believe in this, it means you are a heretic group. See, but I wanted to know that our faith rests upon what the Bible says. So we believe in this God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, so they are not the same, but they are three personality in one. So we can see Jesus himself talking about that. Then why so much emphasis on Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God? Why does the Bible, that the old Bible from Genesis chapter 1, all through to Revelation, center upon Christ. Why the gospel is so important? Remember, in Acts chapter 5, verse 42, the Bible says so, on daily basis, from house to house and the temple, the early church, the disciples, they never stopped teaching and preaching this gospel that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. See, so that's the, 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 the biblical definitions of the gospel or the biblical definition of good news. The angels announced it when Messiah was born. That today it has been it has been born in the city of Bethlehem, a savior, a savior called Christ, a savior. Now, because many people always say that, oh, Jesus is our savior. Yes, you are repeating it. You know why you say Jesus is our savior? It's tautology. That's tautology. Jesus means a savior. So when you say savior, it's the same as Jesus. See? Because when the angel say his name shall be called Jesus, because he shall save his people from their sin. That is the meaning of Jesus. But this Jesus, who is he? Who is this Jesus? So the angels in book of Mark announce that. Book of Luke up to chapter 2, verse 8 to 11, talks about that. The angel said, today is born in Bethlehem a savior, a savior who is called Messiah. So, so we can see clearly the color of definitions of the gospel of goodness is that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. So why is emphasis so much on him? Now let's go to the book of Colossians chapter one, verse 13, all through I'm gonna be reading and I want us to open our Bible so that you know this not Pastor Thomas just talking from his own head, right? We are looking at the Bible, Colossians chapter one from verse 13. So we take it step by step the gospel of the Bible, see? Verse 13 say, God has rescued us from the power of darkness, see? So who rescued us? God, God the Father, he rescued us, see, from the power of darkness, from Satan. And he has translated us, he has brought us into the kingdom of his son, whom he loves. So we can also see the Father and the Son manifesting here. Verse 14, he said, because the Son paid the price to free us, which means that our sins are forgiven. Oh, hallelujah. I love this so much. I love this so much. Now we can see that profoundly, he says that God is the one who delivered us. But how did God deliver us? By his son paying the price to free us from the power of sin, Satan, and separation from God. So Jesus on the cross and through the resurrection, he resolved the problem of sin. Because what separated man from God was sin. See? Satan caused deceived man to sin against God, and sin separated us from God. And we cannot resolve the power of sin, neither can we overcome Satan by ourselves, neither can we go back to God because we are now sinner. We become sin, and we are sinner. And a sinner cannot go back to the Holy God. The eyes of God is righteous, is pure, and that to behold sin. So the Bible said that, but God, in his infinite mercy, he, he delivered us, see, through his son by resolving the price of sin through his death and resurrection. Well, verse 16 of Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. It says, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, <laughs> because he was the one to resurrect from the dead. He conquered death. He conquered Satan. So he's the image of the invisible God. Verse 16, he created all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. He's still talking about the Son, Messiah. 
that he created all things, all, not some, all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, what we can see and what we cannot see. He is the one who created all, whether they are kings or laws, rulers or powers, everything has been created through him and for him. Everything created through him and also for him. Now, verse 17, he existed before everything and holds everything together. The Messiah existed before everything. It was before the creation of everything and is the one sustaining everything. Hebrews chapter one verse, chapter one verse three also supported that. That is the one holding the whole universe with the word of his power. Now let's look at verse 18 of Colossians chapter one verse 18. We are looking at why everything is centered about Christ as the gospel. See, why is this gospel is that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God? Why is this good news that is, this, is, the, is the Christ, the son of the living God? That's what we are looking at. Verse 18 of Colossians chapter 1, see, is also the head of the church. That Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. Is the beginning, the first to come back to life so that it would have first place in everything. Verse 19, God was pleased to have all of himself live in Christ. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. I love this. Now, look at how what the Holy Spirit is revealing to us. These are hidden mysteries we did not know before. But through the writings of the, of the people of God that were inspired by the Holy Ghost, they wrote this scripture for our example so that we can follow it to the end, so that we can believe it, so that we can live it, so that we can run with it. He says, God was pleased as the Father to have all of himself live in Christ. That is everything that making God to be in Christ. So now if I'm looking for God, if I see the Son, I have seen God. Why? Because there is no God without Christ. Because God himself said that everything, it pleased him. It pleased him that everything that makes him God should be in Christ. Now we are looking at why this gospel is so important. Why emphasis is on Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God? Because everything about God the Father is in him. Verse 20, God was also pleased to bring everything on earth and in heaven back to himself through Christ. He did this by making peace through Christ's blood sacrifice on the cross. Verse 21, once you are separated from God, he said we were separated from God, the evil things you did show your hostile, your hostile attitude. Everything, our lifestyle, our attitude, our character, the, the, way we, the way we relate with one another, the, the wickedness in the old world shows who we were. See, that, those are the result of our separation from God. See, our separation from God makes us to live anyhow. See, because our mind is already blinded. But the Bible says we were once separated. It's about now, verse 22. But now Christ has brought you back to God by dying in his physical body. He did this so that you will come into God's presence without sin, fault, or blame. Hallelujah. So now we can see emphasis about why Jesus is the Messiah, is the gospel. Verse 23 of Colossians chapter 1. Say, this is on the condition that you continue in faith without being moved from the solid foundation of the hope that the good news contains. You've heard this good news of which I, Paul, became a servant. It has been spread throughout all creation under heaven. Yes, you've heard this good news. What is that good news? That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, you need to continue in that faith of believing in Jesus as the Christ, as the Son of the living God. Why? Because he's the center of everything. Now, why is the gospel is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that the early church preached it? First John chapter 5, verse 1 talks about that, that whosoever that believes that Jesus is a Christ is born of God. Now, I thank God, Apostle Lily is here. She's a mother, yeah? She's a mother. She has so much experience. She has so many children, biological, and also spiritual daughters all around the globe. Now, let's look at it. Now, if my name is, is Thomas uh, D'Souza, see, D'Souza, my name is Thomas D'Souza, but Apostle Lily knew that even though my name is Jesusa, she knew I am not a son. She knew. She can even call me a son, but she knew within her heart that I'm not a biological son. So how can I become part of her family? See? See? How can I become part of Apostle Lily's family? I must be, I must be born by Apostle Lily. She must carry me for nine months, right? 
She must carry me for nine months and give birth to me. Then I can become part of our family. See? So now also, how can we become part of God's family? One, we must be born of God. See? And how can you be born of God? First John chapter 5, verse 1 talks about that, that whosoever that believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So if you don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, you are not born of God. You can't jump it. You see, you can't say, yes, I believe in God. Oh, Pastor Thomas, it's just you guys that is saying that. I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus is Savior. I believe, I believe, oh Lord, thank you, Jesus is Lord. Now, it has meaning. Now, if you do not believe Jesus as the Messiah, Son of God, it can never be your Lord. It can't be your master. It can't control your life. How can somebody you've not surrendered your life to control your life? See? It's not possible. See? See, it's not possible. So many of us, we, we twist it because we don't understand the clarity of the message that the Bible is passing across to us. See, the philosophy and the theological teachings in our Bible colleges have diluted this gospel for us not to understand it. See, it's so simple. It's so simple that the Bible says it pleases God the Father that everything that makes him God should dwell in. Now, let's look at it. Jesus, as the Messiah, the Son of God, is the gospel because he's the one who manifests the Father. We don't know the God the Father, but it's only the Son that shows the Father. John chapter 14, verse 5 talks about that. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Then Jesus said in verse John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one goes to the Father except through me. If you have known me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you know him through me, and I've seen him in me. Then Philip said to Jesus, hey, Master, I think what you are saying is too much for us. Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. We can go to the Father directly also. We can embrace the Father. Then John, John chapter 14, verse 9, Jesus replied, I have been with all of you for a long time. Don't you know me yet, Philip? The person who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me? What I am telling you doesn't come from me. The Father who lives in me does what he wants. Believe me when, when I say that I am the Father and that the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe me because of the things I do. Now, let's look at two things there. Why this gospel is Jesus is the Christ of God? And why everything is centered about him for us to know him? When you know him as the Messiah, the Son of God, when you believe him, when you deepen yourself in that revelation of who he is, you've already known the Father. Because you cannot know the Father without him. Matthew eleven twenty seven 27 talks about that, that no one knows the Father except the Son. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and to whom the Son reveal him to. Now, it says, believe me that I am the Father. I am Father, we are one. See, if you don't believe that, believe the miracles are performed. The works I'll be doing, the healing, the multiplications of the food. It was, I was not doing it to be famous. Jesus was not doing that to see him as a powerful Jesus. No, he was doing those miracles to show to all the people that he is the promised Messiah. He is the one that Father sent, is the anointed one who will solve the problem of sin, Satan, and separation from God. Okay? And that has been the purpose of the miracles. Okay? So that is why everything set up about, about him that he is the one who manifests the Father. Not only that, not only that he manifests the Father, even the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit also bear witness that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That is the purpose why God gave the church the Holy Spirit, okay? that he might teach us the truth about him. Now, John chapter 14, verse 26, talked about that. He says, however, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything. He will remind you of everything that I have ever told you. Now, let's look at chapter 15, also verse 26. John chapter 15, verse 26 also. He said, the helper, the paracletos, the comforter, whom I've sent to you from the Father, we come. This helper, the spirit of truth, who comes from the Father, will declare the truth about me. That is, he will be a witness of me. He will marry to real me. He will marry to real me. Remember, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, wait, he told his disciple, wait in Jerusalem until you, the Holy Spirit comes unto you and he will empower you so that you become my witness. See, then you can witness me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the whole world that I am the Messiah, the Son of God, who have come. 
and have fulfilled the Messianic covenant. I have resolved the problem of sin on the cross. I have solved the problem of Satan on the cross. And through the resurrection, I've opened a new way for us to meet the Father. Hallelujah. So now we can see why this gospel is so valuable. Why gospel is everything that God is speaking to us from Genesis. See, now look at these wonderful things. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, after man has fallen, now God made a redemptive plan that Messiah will come. When Messiah comes, which is the seed of the woman, he will crush the head of Satan. Satan was, he, he heard it. Man heard it, the promise of coming Messiah. It was not eating. It was a public prophetic declaration from the Father that when Messiah come, he will resolve it. And since then, Satan has been trying to block the coming of Messiah. He has been trying to destroy Messiah. Remember, when Abel uh, was born, when Eve and Adam gave birth to Abel and Cain, devil observed the life of Abel, and he thought Abel was the Messiah. So he inspired Cain to kill his own brother. Okay. And also, when you look at the life of Moses, there was a prophetic uh, messages about the birth of Moses. See, Pharaoh heard it. So Satan thought that Moses was the Messiah. So he inspired to kill Moses, but God speared him, but he wasn't the Messiah. But when Messiah was born, hallelujah, the devil now recognized that maybe this should be the Messiah. He inspired Herod to try to kill Messiah. Then the angel told Joseph and Mary that they should go to Egypt because Herod wanted to kill Messiah. See, that has been the plan of Satan. See, but, but unknowing to him, when he inspired the Israelites to crucify Jesus on the cross, because Acts chapter 2, verse 36 talks about that, that they killed Jesus. We crucified Jesus, but God raised him up. It was in God who killed Jesus, all right? But they, so Satan thought he would kill Messiah, but he never knew that the victory of Messiah, the, the, the salvation of the whole world was on the cross, that Messiah must die on the cross. He never knew. The Bible says, if he had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. So now what I might say to summarize, see, is that this gospel, the Bible has given us, not according to Thomas, not according to professor, not according to a theologian, it's according to the Bible. Bible gives us that the, the definitive purpose of the whole Bible and the definitions of good news or gospel is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And God does not want us to know it by head knowledge. Okay? God wants us to believe it. When you believe, that is when you have salvation. When you believe, not believing once in a week, not believe once in a year. So John chapter 20, verse 31 said, believe it. It's a continual process. That is every second of my life, every minute of my life. Every hour of my life, every day of our life, every, every week of our life, every month, every year, I keep on believing. I keep on dipping myself in the, in, the, in the revelation of who Jesus is. Then he'll begin to reveal himself more unto us. See, that is where the salvation comes. Not once in a year. See, see? Not, not one leg in, one leg out. No. So when the clarity of the gospel comes, break forth in our heart like a fire. When, when that revelation hit our heart, we can never recover from it. Nothing can take it away from you. Even when you don't have money in your pocket, when you don't have food to eat, it won't be a problem again because you now understand what the gospel of the Bible is, is that Jesus is the Christ. And we're looking at why is this gospel is Jesus is the Christ? We look at it because it's the one who was with the Father in the beginning. He was before everything. He is the one who created everything for himself, for him. And it pleased God the Father that everything that makes God God should dwell in him. And we say this faith of believing this gospel of the Bible that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, is the faith that believes in God the Father and also believes in the Holy Spirit. So if so, you can't say, you can't say, oh, Pastor Thomas, eh, I know that is your own thinking. For me, uh, I just know that Jesus is the same as the Holy Spirit is the same. Or, or Father and the Holy Spirit is the same. So the Holy Spirit now is still Jesus Christ. No, that is, that is heretic. That is not biblical. That is not God's word. God never revealed it like that. There are three personalities in one. God the Father. He said, baptized there in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. So we cannot substitute Son to the Holy Spirit, but they work together hand in hand. 
Okay, that is the that is the biblical faith. Okay, and that is only faith that can save India. This is the faith that can save the whole world, not a corrupt faith. The devil want to corrupt it. All what I'm saying now, you may not learn it in Bible college. I know many of us have been to Bible college and theological school. You may not learn it there. I am a theologian. I studied theology in my first degree. I studied theology in my master. So, so I can tell you categorically that I'm also a profession in the aspect of theology. See, but theologians does not even read Bible, but we read many books. Jogma, multi jogma, multi motma. I mean, the great philosopher, the botma. We read those books, but we don't read the Bible. See, and those are the things that corrupt our faith. They corrupt our faith. We read about John Wesley. We read about Martin Luther. We only believe uh, Martin Luther said, uh, John Wesley said, John Austin said. Not what they said. What does the Bible say? Our faith that will save India is the faith that rests upon the power of God. And what is the power of God? Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. That is the power of God. Brethren, if you begin to pray from today for the power of God, please stop praying for the power of God. Praying for the revelations of Jesus. Say, Lord, open my understanding. Let me know you, man. When you know Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God, you know the power of God. Because he is the power of God. He is the wisdom of God. So he is the one who manifests the Father. And we can see that the purpose why God gave us the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit also bear witness that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. Now, lastly, as I begin to round up, John chapter 16, verse 13, up through to 15. John chapter 16, verse 13 to 15. Yet, when the spirit of truth comes, it will guide you into all truth. It will mislead you. It will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own accord. Please mark that. Underline that in your Bible. Please underline it in your Bible. Verse 13. I will read again. Yet, now, this is not an angel speaking here. This is not a prophet speaking here. This is not an apostle speaking here. It's not Paul. It's not Peter speaking here. It's not John. This is Christ himself speaking here. He said, yet, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide thee into all truth. He will not speak on his own accord, but will speak whatever he hears and declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Now, that can be confusing. That why is Jesus just attracting everything to himself? He just... The Holy Spirit will not speak of himself, so he will just come. And what will he be speaking? He will be speaking what he hear from the Messiah, what he hear from Christ. He will declare unto us. Now, in verse 15, he tried to clarify the confusion. He said, all that the Father has is mine. That is why I said, the Holy Spirit will take what is mine and declare it to you. Now, we can see. We can see an accurate, an adequate, a right way that God wants us to believe the gospel. That Father and Son, they are one. They are the same. Holy Spirit, Son, and the Father, they are the same. But they have different role they play. Now, it says here, the Holy Spirit that is coming, the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you, the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me, will not allow me to perform miracle to glorify myself so that the whole world will see me as a powerful prophet. The only thing inside of me, we only allow miracles to happen so that people will believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit himself does not talk about himself. So how can the gift of the Holy Spirit now talk about something different? If the gift of healing, the gift of miracle, does not witness to people that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, then what kind of spirit is that? What kind of gift is that? Why? Because the giver of the gift himself does not talk about himself. He only talks about the Messiah. That Messiah has come, he has solved this problem, he has finished it through the cross and resurrection. And that is where our hope lies. That is why we have a living hope in him. So that is why he is the center of the old Bible. He is the only one message throughout from Genesis to Revelation. And this gospel, who Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, he is coming back the second time. So that is why we are the one who will be able to prepare ourselves for the second coming. We are the one that will be share this message to go to the world to reconcile people back to God, to let them know what God has done in Christ for the whole world. Amen. So God bless you.
Now, as we finish this uh, lecture two, I want to believe that as we continue to see why this gospel is so important for us, we shall continue to look at it in the subsequent lessons in, in, in the next week by God's grace. So I really want to pray with us and with all the disciples in India. I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that you allow the greater grace upon our lives, O oh God. We truly want to know you, Lord. Our heart is hunger, oh Lord. We are hungry for you. We are thirsty for you, oh God. Lord, we are breaking ourselves away from everything we think we know. Our own philosophy, our own mindset, oh God. Our own faith, oh God. But we want to hold on to your faith. The faith of the gospel. The faith of believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, oh Lord. That the early church lived their life for this faith, oh God. They died for this faith, oh God. They run with this task, with this faith of God. And Lord, we also want to do the same, oh God. We want to live that our life will bring salvation message, oh God, to the whole India, oh Lord. Father, I pray for this one, oh God, that you might help them, oh God, to deepen themselves with this revelation. Grant them the spirit of wisdom so that our eyes of understanding will be enlightened so that we know our hope of calling, oh Lord, that is to continually believe in and also to preach this gospel throughout India that Jesus he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thank you, Father. We bless you for allowing this grace upon us. So in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Thomas. And I'd like to really thank our God, our Father. Um, today's message was very deep. I truly pray that and we'll be able to really understand with the help of the Holy Spirit. So um, I'd like to go right into the prayer. Um, let's really pray together. Um, Pastor Zivanson, um, if you're there, please unmute your mic and lead the intercession prayer. Lead us to really pray for the message, pray for each other, and pray for India, and pray for the whole world. So Pastor, if you're online, Please unmute your mic and lead us into the prayer. Um, Pastor Jivanson, are you there? Maybe he got disconnected. Not there, disconnected. Okay. okay. Um, then Pastor Ravi, can you lead the prayer? Pastor Surendra Paul. Okay. Pastor Surendra Paul, can you lead the intercession prayer? Yes, you yes. Can, uh, yes, you can. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let us pray. And Heavenly Father, we are coming to the throne of grace. And thank you, Lord, for a wonderful message. The servant, Reverend Dr. Thomas, who has delivered a wonderful message. Thank God we may understand that Jesus is the Christ. Thank you, Lord, for a, a, a wonderful word that the revelation came from the, the servant. I'm also praying for the our nation, uh, all our state, all our uh, districts, and all our people who are speaking different languages and different peoples, uh, people groups also. I'm praying for the all kind of people who are serving, especially I'm praying for our, thank God for the, our missionaries, uh, such, uh, missionary Nina and Dr. Thomas and uh, 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 Mo and Cho and thank God all, all our the team leaders who are, who are a patient for our India, they are leading us and they are guiding us, they are, they are teaching us, they are uh, 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 showing the way to uh, make the Jesus is the Christ that the people may know. Now I'm praying for the every state of the India. They open the doors for us, Lord. To let the people may know that what is the truth. Truth is the Jesus is the Christ. That every every tongue should be confessed. Jesus is the Christ of the Lord. Lord, Lord open the door for each every one of us. I'll also praying for the uh, Indian uh, disciples. Uh, and pray for uh, uh, every state, those who are working in every state, uh, uh, raise the leaders, uh, right leaders, those who are having a patience for the evangelism, those who are having a patience for the uh, outreach and Lord. I'm also praying for Lord, each every one of us. Uh, thank you, Lord. We are a great blessing to the, us, Lord. Thank you for 
uh, hearing our prayers. I'm also praying for the, all the people groups uh, and different uh, 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 groups in India. Uh, Lord, uh, many people lost their parents and uh, many people lost their children. Lord, open the doors, Lord. Comfort them, Lord. Because of rain, um, uh, Lord, many people are lost their houses. Many people are lost their uh, uh, their food, Lord. Open the door for our Indian people, Lord. Lord, I'm praying for each and every one of us, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord. It's doomed because of this getting every uh, we are waiting for every monday to get a, a wonderful rewards like that oh we, we may understand the right word we may take to the nations to, to be blessed to the nations lord thank god for the uh, uh dr ravi also and i'm praying for his family i'm praying for his good health i'm also praying for the all the missionaries who is working us uh, 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 who, uh, who is teaching us thank you god for everyone Thank God for missionary Nina and thank God for the, uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas and thanking God for uh, 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 Reverend Senior Pastor uh, Cho. I'm also thank God for the Mo who has been teaching us. Lord, we have been blessing by their the, the servants. Lord, thank God for hearing our pray. In the name of Jesus, we ask this pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for the prayer. Um, so I hope that um, it's late night in Korea. I hope that every one of us uh, will take this word of God that we received today and we will we'll meditate upon it, we'll pray about it, we'll think about it so that um, we can receive deeper re revelation and understanding about this gospel of the Bible. Um, so I'd like to invite Pastor Mu for the closing prayer and benediction. And after that, Pastor Ravi, you can um, acknowledge people where they're from. We have 50 plus people gathered here. So, and then we're going to say goodbye. So please, um, Pastor Mu, can you unmute your mic and share the benediction prayer? Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the message today. Allow us to believe correctly, according to the Bible, that Jesus is the Christ. Lord, we pray for India. We pray that you may give revelation to each one of the people gathered here and all of the people whom you have prepared in India to save India. Lord, I truly ask you to use the people gathered here, all of us, so that world evangelization may be fulfilled and that we may see your return in our days. Lord, when you find us in your return, allow us to be found as people who have held on to the gospel and who have not only preached it, but believed it wholeheartedly. And now may uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit be upon the heads of every disciple of Jesus Christ in India, upon the heads of all uh, people who are doing world evangelization from now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mo. So, Pastor Ravi, please unmute your mic. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nina. Uh, thank you, Pastor Thomas, for your message, the gospel. Uh, the gospel is the thing which uh, allows every person's heart to convert to God and uh, with that uh, Holy Spirit, the help of Holy Spirit, it can connect to the God. And now uh, who we are separated, now we are united with the Holy Spirit through the gospel that Jesus is the Christ. Thank you for your beautiful message. Now I am happy to see that uh, uh, all, all are from the different parts of India are present here. It is very colorful. Uh, as I said, uh, India is a mini continent. I can see a lot of people here uh, and uh, day by day God is doing a great work in, uh, uh, in the India uh, to Mission World Evangelization India. Uh, we can see, see all the states are uh, uh, participating here. Uh, most of the states including Andaman, Nicobar, I'm very happy uh, and I'm happy to see uh, many uh, uh, 
the uh, the match 24 14 many hearts are touching to complete the world evangelization uh, thank you for your patience till now you are it's a late night for you even though you people korea are joining us and i also thank for uh, apostle lily who has given great burden who has touched with the world evangelization and which is also her her part of uh, ministry so she was most uh, most interested for the world evangelization uh, and uh, most of people brother agustin uh, from uh, agustin sir from jharkhand and uh, um, brother uh, amarnath and uh, brother bag from uh, himachal pradesh uh, sister aisha ashish moses andrew amarnath and alisha dean బిహుడి జనా భారతి నాయుడు సిస్టర్స్ అండ్ చిరంతన్ పాటిల్ ఫ్రమ్ వెస్ట్ బెంగాల్ దిల్లీని సిస్టర్ దిల్లీని ఇమాన్యుయల్ ఫస్ట్ గంటే ఫస్ట్ జార్జ్ పాల్ ఫస్ట్ జేమ్స్ ఫస్ట్ జానేశ్వర్ ఫస్ట్ జోజో సిస్టర్ జాయ్సి ఫస్ట్ కోనిక జార్జ్ కుమున్ కునాల్ సిస్టర్ మహిమా అండ్ మీనాక్షి అండ్ మోజస్ ఫస్ట్ మోజస్ సిస్టర్ నీరజ సిస్టర్ నేహా సిస్టర్ నిషా ఓకెన్ సింగ్ ఫస్ట్ ఫస్ట్ మార్క్ పూనం ప్రకాష్ పాల్ ఫస్ట్ బిలౌడ్ ఫస్ట్ రాజ్పత్ పాని ఫ్రమ్ ఒరిస్సా ఫస్ట్ వినోద్ కుమార్ అండ్ అపోజిట్ సురేంద్ర పాల్ అండ్ అండ్ రాజేష్ సాండ్రా అండ్ మై బిలౌడ్ బిషప్ జ్ఞాన ప్రకాష్ ఫ్రమ్ తమిళనాడు and uh, rubina singh and sadak bag and sanshay uh, surupa rani sister tara uh, vandana sister vandana vicky mahi and uh, part of apf fca team and uh, uh, everyone who has participated my sister paramveer and uh, all the participants who has received the true gospel i am very happy uh for your participation uh, this is not for any performance this is only to complete the world evangelization india which is a part of matthew 24 14 uh, really thank you for the pastor cho and all the team for their uh, dedication and all the pastors who have attended for their dedicating time and their dedication for the matthew 24 world evangelization in our days and we will see the end coming in our days and we will see the second coming in our days Uh, thank you all thank you for your participation uh, thank you will make complete the world evangelization uh, thank you for everyone's participation amen thank, amen. You. thank you pastor ravi um, before we say goodbye i'd like to make an announcement um so every saturday we also have a meeting um but with all the international people not just from asia but people from africa latin america you know or uh, sometimes canada united states so those pe- disciples who speak english they gather together and then we're sharing the gospel so it would be great if you can join us um we will up- upload the link um and then if you want it you can always ask um pastor ravi for it and also we have created the youtube channel um so that when we record this type of meeting we will upload it um please uh, subscribe to international disciples evangelism splash channel um i'd like to put it on the chat room so that you can look for it on youtube and also um we have um did, we did the live streaming on facebook so um so next week i will be able to share learn how to share the link so that um if you can invite somebody to watch for those who doesn't you know have on um, zoom app application but if they still want to watch they will be able to connect to either youtube or the facebook so that they'll be able to enjoy the message and still be blessed so that was the announcement and i hope to see you next week okay so please unmute yourself and say goodbye to each other Good night.
thank you thank you pastor mo thank you thomas thank you sister lina thank you sister ravi thank you thank you so much sister 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 Yeah, good night. Yeah, Gloria. Yeah, it's good to see. You. Yeah, good night. Yeah, Vicky. Yeah, Pastor Nisha Munda. Yeah, Pastor Nisha. Brother Rajesh, Brother George, yeah. Pastor George. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, Pastor Delini. Sadak Bag. Yeah. Yeah, good night. Pastor Apostle Lily, thank you so much. Yeah. Bless you. My regards to everybody. Yeah, please you sleep well. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Good night. Yeah, yeah, good night.